Okay, good afternoon everybody who is here for the last lesson of the Automating JS Processes course. Uh, so far we have gone through uh, six weeks in the second period and then of course plus uh, those contents in the GeoPython course uh, in the first period. So the topic for today's lesson is uh, focused on using Python in GIS and we have Papu here uh, to walk us through a nice tutorial. Mm, then we had promised to provide some raster data processing materials and I know that some of you are keen to use those also in your own work. Uh, now, uh, at least this year, we are now providing them uh, on the web pages so you can go through them. Uh, not all of the input data exists, but for example, if you then want to use those methods in your final assignment, you can find quite a few notebooks in here. Uh, I can also provide them in the CSC notebooks environment. They are not yet there, uh, now that I remember that. Uh, but today's lesson uh, indeed is focused on uh, using Python in QGIS. So Tatu will introduce us to uh, using Python in QGIS in general. Uh, then we'll uh, create a little, well first we'll create a little function and then yeah. create a little plugin around that. So of course maybe some of you will continue with Python by uh, writing your own scripts for your own work or maybe for your team or research group, but then often you might also be developing tools for people who don't know how to program. And in that case, then we'll create a little plugin where there's a button, you can click on buttons and type in input data, output data, and then run some process. So we'll get kind of a quick overview on that, uh, and then a bunch of links where to find more information. Um, that's that, and then after the break, uh, we might continue a bit with the tutorial, and then I'll once more uh, repeat the final assignment instructions and wrap up the course. So today you don't need to open the CSC notebooks environment at all. Either use your own computer if you have QGIS installed. Uh, QGIS 3. Point something is enough. Here we have uh, QGIS desktop 3.4. I think the latest is now 3.10 yeah. available. But the long-term release is this 3.4, so that's okay. And here in the GIS labs you have those on the computers and as we already mentioned if you need to change the language we recommend you change it to Finnish so go to settings yeah. options uh, the English yes from Finnish to English so it's from settings uh, options uh, and then this user interface translation and then you need to close the software and restart yeah. um, um, if you're using your own, own, own computers uh, I suggest that you have a use a Windows computer since there are some platform differences for this plugin development. Yeah. At least. Yeah, I guess most of most of the students who are here are using Windows computers, so that's yeah. that's fine. But I'll let Tatu walk you through this maybe a brief introduction. So Tatu has taken this course last year, right? Yeah. And then uh, he's been working at the National Land Survey of Finland developing a QGIS plugin for interacting with data. And then also maybe after the break we can interview Tatu about the final assignment as well. So <laughs> let's make most of him being in here. And he already met Tatu in the first period in the practical exercises. So uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, yeah. Walk, walk mentioned. Um, so we'll be using QGIS, which is program in C++. Uh, a bit more let's say lower level language than Python, a bit more not so user friendly as Python. But thankfully there are uh, basically everything you do in QGIS, every time you run some sort of process or use a tool or something, or just like a open a layer or something, these things can be done programmatically. You can use programs, Python programs to do this. Do the very same things. Uh, you could, for example, uh, link together several processes. So you create a, this, for example, with the model builder. I'm sure you have used it at some point. Uh, 
you could use this Python scripting to do field calculator stuff. So you can send a Python script here and do whatever you want. It's a bit more flexible than the regular old old BS field calculator. And then you of course can create buttons like this or scripts for you to use so you can reuse the same processes again or for if you want to uh, give this easy scripts to someone else to use so yeah like I mentioned this is coded in C++ but it most if not all functions are available via the Python API so it's application programming interface so you don't I, when I develop, developed the plugin, I ran into a few issues, uh, like very few cases where, where something wasn't available on the Python side, but these are pretty much uh, very rare exceptions. So, to start, off, start us off today, we will be doing a bit of Python, running Python code from the QGIS on Python console. Then we'll ex export that code that you write in the console into a script so it's reusable it's in a py file and finally we will export that function from that uh, script into a plugin so there's a user, inf in user interface element uh, from which we can run the uh, function of the yeah run the python function yeah let's get started so open up QGIS just three point anything really as long as you have a uh, good just version starting with three you get to go so we'll be needing some vector type data uh, it doesn't really matter which but since it's sort of reliable and simple we'll be getting data from this uh, VFS layer or VFS server of the city of Helsinki so copy this link here Control C so you have copied and then go to QGIS and create a new connection to the server so add layer and add VFS layer and new so then you paste that URL here name this something like VFS Helsinki Okay, and connect, and then you get a long list of all different sorts of stuff. Uh, we'll be using, we just want something simple, you'll be, the script you are creating uses uh, line type data, so that's why we'll, get, we'll be getting a layer of metro railways, lines, so you can just type something like metro underscore plata, or just metro. So we want this layer called Seltokartta Liikenne Metro Rata. And before you add it, you can see that now it's using this global uh, CRS VGS84. Uh, we don't want that since that, that's not projected. It doesn't use meters as this basic unit. So let's change that and select. We can query. Uh, we can acquire data from VFS server in many different uh, coordinate systems. So, so use this 3879, which is the standard coordinate system for city of Helsinki and I probably saw that other cities in Helsinki Finland as well. Can you show once more where you find this coordinate reference system? Yeah, so it's under here on the bottom. So it by default is probably something like for to like the VGS84, so you're gonna change it. It draws this new dialog, and here on the field that I paste 3879. So 3879, and you should get just one result ETRS 89 slash EK something something something. Alright, and now you can add the data. 
but it's very simple. Very simple vector layer. Doesn't really have much to it. You can check the attribute table there. Three features there. So now we get to the actual actual Python scripting part. So from plugins, you can open Python console or use the uh, shortcut Control Alt P. Yeah. So this is a console. I don't know if you have on this course you've been using notebooks, so you can read on the cells and uh, like write write code and write the cells and run them at any any like order. But this console, so you write a single single line of code, and then we pass it to the console, then it runs runs the functions. So all right. So how can we access this layer? How can we create some sort of reference to it? So So there's this uh, line of code on this object that's iFace, that's for interface. So that uh, refers to the whole nice there. So it sort of refers to this whole program and we can, from in the interface, we can get the currently active layer. So the active layer is the one that's highlighted here. If you have multiple layers, it's always the one that's sort of colored here. So we create a reference to the current layer by pasting layer equals iFace active layer. So this function returns that layer. So I've just pasted it there on the console. Uh, this just about the sort of formatting this uh, three three arrows here it says to implicate that it's sort of input for the console. And if there's nothing there, it's meaning that it's output. So layer equals active face. No, nice. The next, next, let's see that we got it all right. So we print the type of the object that we just created the reference to. Okay, so since we have something called QGIS vector layer, so this is a class of, of the QGIS sort of uh, Python Python uh, plugin, so like Python-like, whatever they're called. And now we get an object of the class QGIS vector layer, which is within the QGIS core model. You don't really need to know a lot about this, but if you want to read more on stuff, you can see the extensive, extensive documentation. So there are seven models, which all have different functions, and within these models are different classes. So, like we see here, it's in the core model, so we can click core here, and we just Search for QGS vector layer. You can find it here. And if you really want to get like deep into this QGS development, you will be spending a lot of time staring at these documentations. Okay, but let's see what we can next. What more we can find about the layer? So we can print the source name. It's just a name that's sort of using to refer to it. So, yeah, just printing out the same name as you can see here. And we can access feature count. This is a simple integer value of how many features there are in this layer. Well, there are three. You can easily, easily make sure of this. Check the attribute table. Sure enough, there are just three three features and uh, you can see that when you call something like this on the layer object if you want to look at the documentation you can uh, let's see source name yeah so when you call some when you call some sort of method like it's called in, in this lingo method or function 
you can see the documentation of each method on this website or you can print it out here you can call help function on any layer it will print like thousand lines yeah like three thousand lines so this is the same thing as as the Linus or as the documentation on the site it has every single single function so if you if you wonder what for example source name does well it's the description isn't very very uh, useful which says that it's returning a string object or if you use feature count Set a system name returns the number of features trended with the specified legend key. Alright. So now we have a layer. We have ways to access the features in it. So let's get more deep into it. So we also have this function called get features, which returns in, in turn feature objects. You wanna check the no, documentation once again. Uh, you can do so. So get features, quiet the layers, features specified. What the layers specified in request? So we can create this for loop where we loop through every feature on the layer. So I'll just copy this line of code. For feature in get features. Now you need to, you can see that the arrows turned into dots. That means that we are within the for loop. So we'll change this print the second attribute of the is of each feature. And once you you're still in the follow loop, once you sort of add nothing into it in the follow loop and just press enter, it should run the code. So we're saying here that for for the features get attributes. So a single feature is a single row in the attribute table. And we're saying that for the attribute, print out the second one. Remember, start from zero. Yeah. Yeah, maybe here note the indentation after the for loop. Yeah. So you need to add the indentation of pressing yeah. tabulator or for time space. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, That's true. you get an indentation error. Ah, yeah, correct. Uh, if you want to repeat code, you can press arrow keys up and down to get back to like previous line of lines of code. If you look at the documentation for uh, QGIS feature, you will find a function or a method for attributes. And once again you can read up more read up more on what it does. Right. So we know that we have a layer, we know that we can access the attributes on it. What can we do? Well, a lot of things, but uh, let's do something really simple. You know, like this very sort of mock code or toy code. So we know that the feature have features have attributes. We see it on the attribute table. But if they are geographical object, objects, then, then they also have uh, geometry attached to them. So like I said, the features have geometry as well, if they are geogra geographical features. And uh, if you look at the documentation once again, so geometry objects, so there's this method for length. So we can see that it returns the length of geometry using geos. So we'll use this to our advantage and create this simple script that counts, counts the length, like the total length of all the features in a layer. So we'll first do it, do it on the console. So let's create an empty integer variable called total length. Let me say that it's equal zero. Enter. We don't really run anything, we just create an empty object. Then we create a new for loop. Once again, we loop through all the features in the layer. Then
then now that we are within the for loop, rem remember the indentation. Now we get the geometry object from the feature. Press enter. Okay, we have geometry. And as, uh, as I mentioned before, geometry ob objects have the method length. So next we'll call on the length. And then we will sum that length, sum that integer value to the total length. So the point here is that once we get through the loop, uh, it va it, this total length variable will house like the total total length in meters of all the uh, all the line features on the layer. Okay, and once you are true with this, just press enter. It doesn't do anything but now that we now we have this total length variable. And next we will simply just print out the result. So you can copy this. We are a bit of flair here, we add the source name here as well so the user can know which layer is printed out and uh, we transform the variable from uh, meters into kilometers and round up the result. Okay, so I'll just paste this print print statement here and you just get the result that it's yeah, the Hessing's metro line is 34.8 kilometers long and that's probably correct we can just, just check it as well yeah 25 kilometers so we didn't mess something up on the way okay so I pasted the code on, on the console but what if you want to reuse this function or share it with, or share it with someone so that's where this uh, scripting comes into play. So from the console, there's this button here from where you can open open code editor. It's basically the same thing as, I don't know, Spider or Idle or really any text editor. But it's, it's simple that it's within, within QGIS. So you can use it. Uh, you can open from this middle button here. Show editor. And when the console, uh, whereas when you run the console, it's, you, you can only run like a single line of code at a time. In the script, you can just type it out. Yeah. And it wants more show where you open the console. Yeah. Oh, so there's this yeah, yeah small button here. Where it opens up. So in this editor, we can. It works much like the uh, cells in the um, notebooks that we're using. So we can just type out type out code here, and then when we are done, we can run the code. So we'll apply the code that we just created in the script. So we'll. I'm already typing it out here. So we'll create this function which we created at least at some point in, in this course. So we define a script called line length calc. And of course, as you should have, you, there's some sort of description of, of what it does. So every time we call this function, it gets the current active layer and creates a, a variable with the value of zero. Then it does this for loop that it does just did. And finally it prints out the result. Um, if there are any Pythonistas here, you probably you can see that it's it's pretty poor form to have so many things in a single single function. It should probably be better to divide it into <coughs> multiple functions, but uh, and I did have a version like that, but just having like this make it makes things easier later on. So you can copy this whole whole thing here, and all of this is remember. See that it's all of this is embedded since it's within this function, and this simply calls the function. So 
paste it here. So I have something like 16 lines of code. <coughs> and you can just run the script as you have pasted, in, pasted, pasted it into the editor. And it does the same exact thing as before. So now that we have pasted in here, we can save the script. So let's save the script and name it. Um, what did we name it? Yeah, line length calculator. Line length calculator dot pi. Close this here, and we can reopen it from here, line it, calculator, and run the code again. So now we have a reusable, re reusable code within QJS. But, 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 is everyone with me? There was a question should you also copy the line where you call the function? So, yes, it's at the bottom. Yeah. So then the script file defines the function and calls the function, and all of those processes happen when you run the yeah. file and the output gets printed. Other yeah. Otherwise, it would only be defined. Right? Yeah, so if you comment out this line of here, it does nothing. And usually it sprints out. Or oh, it does something, but it does nothing visible. Okay. So now we have reusable code, but uh, it's not really very user friendly. So what if you want to show your mother how to use QGIS and you have want to show her this cool thing you created, but she has no idea how to what to do with Python scripts or anything like that. So next up, we'll create a very simple plugin uh, where we we'll add this button, and every time you press the button, you will run this same function. Here. Yeah. So yeah, this next section is aimed at Windows computers. Um, you can do plugin development on Linux and MacBooks as well, but um, for the, for the kit, it's as simple as, as possible. Uh, it's, you can't really do it. Oh, these instructions are only for Windows computers, since there are some some points where they instructions diverge a bit for the different operating systems. We can continue, continue in a bit, but you can already open up this plugin repository here. Since we'll be for create create plugins, we need to install plugins first. Alright. So, like I said, now you next need to open up this plugin repository, manage and install plugins. So, quickly about the plugins. They're, they're written in Python, and they're used to extend the functionality of, of the base, base system, so there are many useful ones. If you've been using QGIS, you've probably installed some plugins. Uh, plugins can be found on this uh, yeah, this manager, uh, and that means they are they're in a remote repository, or they can be installed from a zip file as well. But the two plugins that we need now uh, can be found on this repository. Uh, make sure, by the way, before you start installing, make sure that you have this from settings. You have show also experimental plugins set. Since I think at least one of those plugins is experimental. So I'll click this to be active. And then search for builder and install plugin builder tree. So we need a plugin to create the plugin, or we don't need one, but creating this plugin base within without this plugin builder would be very tedious and time consuming and annoying and useless. So I install this plugin.
and then once you have installed builder, search for re reloader, which isn't as uh, so important as builder, but uh, it makes things a lot easier later on. Once you if you want to like into serious plugin development, so install this as well. And I can see that there are new new icons here, and you can also find them from plugins and plugin builder. So now we'll create the base for our plugin. So plugin builder is used for that, and then we will. Once we have created this simple base, we will add our own functionality into it. I've added a folder here. I can see pretty much what you, what you wanna like do here. All of these uh, fields must be typed into something. So let's call our class line length calc. And all of this is written in this so-called camel case. And create a plugin name, which can be just plain text. So line name calc. And do something serious, calculates. Or you can type really anything here in the description. Then this one needs to be Python model name, so you'll be using underscores here. So line underscore length calc. These are good. Then you can set your own name here or some sort of funny name if you can think of something. And you also, you don't really need to set. If you want to do, really want to do the plugin, you can just be serious here. But I can just set something. All right. So we have this fields in here typed into something like this. These are the important ones beginning what we want to call a class name and a plugin name and the module name all right so let's continue you don't really need anything here but you can set something there uh, good yeah we can just leave this to be a default or you can this not really need anything yet. You can set them. I guess you can change these later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just use the default settings. There are a lot, lot of things that this plugin can do. Internationalization means that it's ready to. You can translate your plugin in different languages. You can set them, leave them as, as they are. If you want to publicate your publicize, if you want to release your plugin, you need to add these, but we don't need to do that either. Now this is where things get a bit trickier. So we're going to create a, a output directory or set up output directory for our plugin. So by default, there's this specific location from which QGIS will search for the plugins. And uh, it's a bit hard to find, but likely there's a shortcut. So, and just, I'll just say that, that if you want to do serious plugin development, you, you shouldn't do as we do here, but we can make things a bit simpler. I'll explain more later. But anyway, now we get the uh, file path to a location of the folder where the plugins are stored. So from QGIS, select settings and user profiles. 
settings, user profiles, and open active profile folder. Click that. So now it's going to this app data and rooming and it has a profile. So here you can find Python. Click that. And from that you can find plugins. So here you can find folders for all the installed plugins. You might have. Not that much, I might have many plugins, so whatever. But if you want to check the like folders here, they are they have all the files related to a single plugin, all the images and all the script files and things like that. So let's copy this path. So, so using Windows we can just click on the top here and copy that. Alright, and now we can get back to plugin builder. You could probably paste it here, yeah, or you could open it up here. Same thing, I think, yeah. So now we can see that it gives us, a, gives us a path to the plugin folder. And it says that it will create a new folder there called Lineland Calc. Alright, and now that we are set, you can press Generate. And you can just yeah. Yeah this yeah this error is supposed to happen. Okay. Yeah. So no problem. That's why we need to do some bit of trickery next. But yeah. Okay. If you wanna check the plugin path, so now we have this line that calc. So the plugin builder created automatically created all these files in there. So, for example, this planetcard.pi, here we have the main code, name of the code, then you created this metadata file, where we have this, uh, have all the information that we just put in there. Then you have files relating to the user interface, and all of these other things. But the main, the main things here are this planetcard.pi, and uh, this line account that dialog pi but but so we have the files but we need to do some pretty annoying tedious stuff next before we can launch our plugin so it's relating to the error message that you just get good so there's this file called resources.qrc uh, and uh, we need to compile that we need to run this specific script so that we create its resources.pi so we need to transform this into a specific pythonic file and this is just done just because we need, need it yeah the python blockings need something like that so this is where things diverge if you're using Mac or Linux. But there are ways to do this for them as well. So we need to create something called a batch file. And the code, the code for that batch file is here. So we need to tell the uh, system to look for these specific, specific files in this path. And then it, we need to say it runs this PRCC file on these files. So then it compiles the QRC file that we have and creates the file that we need. So we need to create a new text document here. And this is in the line -like calc folder that we just created on the blocking path. So a new um, text document. And paste this these lines of code in there. So you can just use notepad, you can paste these lines of code in there. But but you need to probably need to or you need to uh, change this a bit. So you need to define the path in your uh, QGIS installation. And the tricky thing is that it's it, uh, it changes based on which QGIS 
uh, version you have, so if you have 3.4, you need to re replace this X with 4, or 3.6, you need to replace it with 6, and things like that. So next, just check, check your own installation. So if you have this QGIS installation, you should find it in program files on the C disk. So yeah, Bokwas 3.6 installed. And you can find and this it, the script is basically telling that search for these files in its location for or for w dot underscore environment path. So on your install location you should find it in program files and QGIS. But there's also another option. It could be installed on your C, uh, root on your C or whatever uh, whatever hard drive you have. And there could be something called OS, OS Geo for Windows for W64. So this this is depending on whether you have just installed the QGIS or whether you have installed uh, the OS Geo for Windows. Okay. You can see it from the C drive. So then you need all you need to paste it into the stack document and replace this access switch six. But in my case it was four. Yeah. So if you have something else you have to replace it with that. So you can see that it's searching for something called, for example, O4W environment in here. So we can look for that. So this is basically saying that look for look for these files, and you can get more information there. And we're doing that because then we need to run this uh, run this other line of code. That compiles it and the instructions how to do it this in these paths. But does everyone have some sort of path in the installation? It could be like this, or it could be the OS Geo path. <coughs> but it should be sh should be the same from this bin bin file onwards. So you need to replace just this part. Okay. Then we can save save this file as and let's save it as compile compile dot bat and now we have a new batch file in here. So hopefully everything goes. That's right. Okay. So now double click on this compound that bat. It should run something and now you should get a new file. Yeah, you should get a new file called resource.pi. Alright, so now that we have done this tedious part. We should be able to activate our plugin. It might be that we need to restart QGIS. Oh. Yeah, let's restart QGIS. And I'm probably going to save your project. So, yeah, when, once you run the path file, it creates this resources.pi file. So we need that need that for the plugin to work. Yeah. So just to check that everything works, we need to restart QGIS so the program knows to look for the plugin, the new plugin. So save your project. Launch QGIS again. 
Once you have compiled the file. Open it again. And you can open the plugin repository. And you will find your your plugin in there. Line it calculator. And activate it. And you get a new new icon in there. works. Okay, so just go through things once more. Once you have compiled the resources, uh, restart QGIS, probably going to save your project before that, so you get you don't lose a unit to search for this layer again. Then go into the plugin manager and installed and you will find your plugin in here and just activate it yeah activate it and then you get the new icon and then you go around this plugin which isn't very exciting as of yet it doesn't really do anything it's just the plugin base so next next job is to add the functionality that you created into this plugin. So like I mentioned before, now go back to the uh, folder where you have line calculator, open it up again. So the main code file where really anything everything interesting happens, interesting happens, is this line calc. Di, which the plugin builder plugin created for us automatically. So let's let's just check that what we have here. Um, you can open it up in really any text editor, even Notepad plus plus or Notepad or something. Since you have installed Anaconda, you also have this. Uh, Devel development environment called Spider. So you can open that up as well. This JS class computers have something called idle. So you can right click on the file, PI file, and there should be open with idle or something, edit with idle. Yeah. So here we can find some Python code that was automatically created. and can find everything like from the metadata do importing some functions when you work within uh, QJS or running the Python console we don't need to import anything usually since it's automatic imports some modules, modules that we need or methods uh, but once you work outside of the console or code editor we need to start importing stuff. So there's a class called line calc and within this class there are many functions. The interesting ones and these are related to the graphic user interface, the user interface and and uh, translating stuff and things like that. We don't really need to concern ourselves with that. All we need to do is scroll to this very bottom and here we can pass or paste or, or <laughs> we can paste the script that we created earlier or the function open it up somewhere or you can also copy and paste it from the website whatever the instructions so copy and paste is def defined line at calc so this function only the function are yeah function yeah no function call at this time yeah it's not needed in here it will probably end in an error 
But remember that we are within a class, so all of these need to be indented. Okay, so in spider or idle, it should look something like this. So it's within the class, and we add a new function to it. Okay, so now I have pasted the functionality into our script file, into this plugin script file. And now we need to find some sort of way for the user to call it using the user interface. So, you can save, it, save this for now. Save your line and calc. So the user interface in GoodJS, uh, in, in this all these plugins, uh, is handled by a framework called Qt. Uh, you don't really need to know much about it, but uh, it basically it's a very flexible framework with, on which you could add things like uh, tables or sliders or just simple buttons. So every time you run some sort of some sort of uh, function in here and cross a window. All of these selections are created with the same framework. We could add this uh, by code, these elements, but there's a much simpler way to do it as well. So with every uh, QGIS installation, at least in, on Windows, there's also something called QT Designer. So you can search for that program. So it shows you QT Designer with QGIS custom widgets. So open that one up. So now we have a user graphic user interface to add these elements into our, our plugin. And we want to open the basic the basis that we have on there. So the plugin builders created this UI file for us and we will just edit that UI file for our needs. So once again you will need the path. And here it should show you alignment calc dialog base dot UI. And you want to open that one up. So once again and sure enough it give us the, gives us the same base that we saw in QGIS. So there's nothing more than the OK and Cancel buttons. Yeah, so basically, quickly about this QT Designer. So on the right, you will see all the objects, objects in this dialog. So now there's nothing more than the button box. And you can... You can like edit the features of this button box here and on the right you will see all of these other widgets or like user interface elements a lot of, lot of stuff uh, like text fields or checkboxes or tables or then, then there's also widgets specifically for QGIS uh, like this group box. If you are using your jazz you will probably have been run. You have probably encountered this at some point. But we'll be doing something very simple. We will just add a push button into this base. So push button and we can now rescale it to be more impressive. And it, now you can see that there's the push button has also been added into the object inspector on the right. And we also have an option to modify its its attributes uh, on this property window, a property editor. So we will do two things to modify the properties of the push button. We will rename it into line length button, just to be like 
more explicit on what it does. Landed button. So now I can see that the name here has changed to the landed button. I'm using camel cases once again, because I think Qt prefers that. And then you can scroll down in the screen section. And there's an attribute called text. Right now it's called push button. We'll rename it into uh, <coughs> some text that's more informative. So we'll type in calculate line lengths. Please, if you want to be polite. Okay, so now we have modified two things on this button. So we renamed object name into line length button, like this, and you can see it here as well. And then we change the default text to be suited for our needs. Alright, so we don't need to do anything more on this QT designer. Just a quick, quick way to show how we can build uh, plugging interfaces. Now I can press save. I remember to do that. Remember to save your changes. Okay, so now I have the function in the code. We also have a, this button on the user interface. So now only, now only all you have to do is tie these two, two together. So we have to somehow define that every time this button is pressed, we will run the function. So let's get back to the code. We only need to change a few things here. So all it requires is one line of code to tie, the, tie the, um, this button into this function. And you can find it in here. If you are, have a hard time like giving up it, just, I'm going a bit fast so you can always read these instructions on the site as well. So we need to add this line of code here. So it's basically saying that in this dialog, Every time this line button is pressed, run the method line at calc. So the QT framework has some has a feature called signals. And the signal can be sent on various things when something's done to the objects. So for example here we say that when, when the button is clicked, connect it in the R uh, uh, function. So if you think of it like a a messenger is sent out and we need to find give like an address for the messenger for it to be somewhere so it, it finds the correct location all right so paste that line of code on the run method just this first start it basically means that every, that this code is on run the very first time the uh, plugin is plugin is run because we don't, we don't want to create multiple connections, we only need it once. Okay, and make sure it's correctly indented, it's within this if if clause here. <coughs> Alright, then we need to do two more changes. So you can see that every function within this class has this parameter called self. I don't think it's been uh, discussed before on this course and I'm not really understand on it either I've linked something in here that has more information on itself but basically for us for our needs we just it means that we need to write self here so it inherits itself basically this function or method And also, interface is within this uh, within this code here. It's actually a class class variable, and this basically means that uh, it creates a that is just to this object. But anyway, for our needs, just type self here as well. So self dot i face active layer. So it needs knows where to look for the 
active layer and the interface object. All right. And that's it, pretty much. Now, save your changes. Control S or save or whatever. So once again, three things you have to modify the code, add this line of code, then add self here and self here as well. All right. Now we can finally get back to QJS. Now we get to use our plugin reloader. So if you didn't, wouldn't have this plugin installed, every time you made changes to the code of the plugin, you would need to restart the whole program. So this makes things simpler. We can just select line length calc and OK. That's reloaded. And now you can run your plugin. And now, ta da! The new button has appeared in here. And now I can press the calculate. And if you have the Python console open, you can see that it's, it does the very same thing that, that it did before. So it prints out the results. What if the Python console is not open and you run that tool? Then you don't get anything really. Yeah. So yeah, there, there are ways to. Yeah, yeah. If you wanna, there are many ways to like inform yourself what you've done so that you could block the messages or you could show a new screen or really anything. Yeah, but I found it this to be the simplest way to do it. All right. So. There are still some problems, at least I saw some of, some of you got the plugin to work. So this was the basic idea of this exercise. So you've been introduced to the um, QGIS's Python API. How you can get uh, objects or how you can run code and run functions within QGIS. Then you created the script. And finally you applied the script the Python plugin. And of course this is a very simple one. It didn't really do anything that in interesting. But I wanted to show, it, show you how we can do uh, this. I can achieve this basic level uh, of development of Python plugin. And of course if you want to get really into it, there are better ways to get started. Like, like, oh, to introduce myself more to that Python, Python in QGIS. So I've linked some resources uh, on the instructions. You're gonna get more out of Py, Py GIS, QGIS. You might wanna check out this beginner-friendly introduction into QGIS. And uh, then just the before mentioned developer's cookbook. And then there's this book, and of course the Stack Exchange. You probably already used it since you're pretty long into deep into coding, so you can't you can't really not use stack stack exchange. And there's also the fact that you can if you want to know how something is done in uh, QGIS as a plugin, the source code is always within this within the same folder, so you can always read the source code and see how something was done. If you want to get some further ideas. Then there's also a few links on how to get started on, on building your plugins. So we did, did a few short, shortcuts here. So if you want to get really deep and serious into it, you can do it here. Also I linked a few, few of these bit more extensive functions for you to use. So you can try out, try out these as well. There's also some challenges here if you want to uh, when I try to like further your knowledge of PyGIS, PyQGIS, so you can try to implement these features that I suggest here, or do something else. For example, this buffer part here, you just copy and paste it into this uh, editor, copy and paste, and you can run it. Hmm. 
and then something goes wrong as usual. Yeah. Well, this should work. So this is a bit more exten extensive code. So basically it creates a new window where you can draw polygons. And do stuff with them. I originally created this when I was working for SGI. I created like the basis for this. For the project, I might just close it. It prints out the coordinates of the every single point on that polygon. So yeah, I need to fix this one, but anyway, there are further challenges if you want to dive more deeply into it. You for example, try to change the color of the, uh, of the polygon drawing window. And like I mentioned before, this was a very simple plugin. The user interface element doesn't really do that much here. It was just for an example. When I was working for FGI, I created this plugin. Yeah, sure. I created this plugin that for the their um, GeoBus Finland project, which is basically this web service or web portal for for getting raster data really flexibly. So this is all created with these very same tools that I just showed you. So I edited the code in Spider, I created the user interface in QD Designer, and added functionality in it. So let's just show something. Let's get all the core in land cover sections. Let's crop them with, with municipalities. Let's get them from Helsinki. Let's select the resolution. Let's, let's say 20 meters. No, maybe that's too ambitious. So well, now we just get the data. And now we have to copy that for data here. And since these are discrete layers, uh, it also gets the legend, uh, also labels. Uh, labels every cell correctly. So if you wanna work with trusted data, maybe if you wanna work with uh, on your final project, this GeoBus project is free to use for anyone. Free to use for anyone from this web service. You can paste your URLs, like you can get this data just simply by pasting URLs and you can also download the plugin from this GitHub repository. Please do, I spend a lot of time on it and I don't think so that many people have downloaded it. So you can work on raster data. I think that's Can you show the readme? Yeah. So there's in information on how to download the plugin and what it does and things like that. And if you wanna use it on some maybe use it on some scientific work, please cite the OBIR project. Yeah. So, yeah. And like I mentioned, all of the data, this is basically, I just expanded the very same line and calc that you have here. I expanded it, expanded it with new function and at the same time we figured that that we need to do something I just added a new function. So for example, there's this function for when you download the data, I want to make sure that you're not trying to download the whole uh, elevation model for the whole Finland in one meter resolution. So, uh, so I estimate the file size using this like function. And if it finds out that you're trying to do something wild, it stops you. And yeah. And if you want to get the data, it does a number of these checks that what you're doing is, is illegal. It's that it functions correctly. 
So yeah. Uh, and when I created, started working on this plugin, I didn't have much more experience than this this course. So you don't really need anything more than that. You just need you have some basic knowledge of Python and a lot of a lot of uh, time to spend looking at documentation and figuring out how, how, how things work. But yeah, I hope you got something out of it. Now you know how to create simple plugins. Uh, you have the resources in there. You can try out the challenges if you want. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me, I think. <laughs>